Good day, everyone. This is Tatiana Thompson and episode 36 of Brombird News. We have pictures that came from New Zealand and Australia on the winner's circle, and we're back in the BBN kitchen on this episode. I received a few emails asking me how often, when and how to clean hummingbird feeders. Well, it all depends on uh, what kind of weather you're experiencing. If it's really hot and humid and if your feeder is hanging right in the sun, then it's probably two to three days that you should uh, change nectar and clean your feeder. If you're going through some cool weather and your feeder is hanging in the shade, then you can leave it there probably safely to probably five to six days. Well, you can actually check what's going on. If you see that kind of haze forming inside or if there are little black dots on the inside, then it's definitely time to clean your feeder and put some fresh nectar inside. And then of course, cleaning feeder is uh, quite a challenge. I actually ended up retiring some of my feeders because I couldn't get that black mold, just couldn't reach with a brush. And then I received an email from Noreen Freebairn. She actually made her own feeder out of a little perfume bottle. So it was really tricky to get that cleaned. And here's what she recommended here, a couple of pictures from her. I tried it out and it really works. That's the only way I clean my feeders now. So all you need is a little bit of rice. Here I have basmati rice, like that. And some hot water. Okay, so what you do, you don't need a lot of rice because it needs to kind of just be loose in there. So pour it in here. I'm probably gonna make a mess. Yeah, that should be good. And then some hot water. And then you have to kind of close it so you can swish it around. So I just use this. And then I go over the sink and I just swish it here and there like this. Depending on how dirty your feeder is, it might take you five to 10 minutes to get all that dirt out. You can actually see the rice grains lift the black mold off. It's quite fascinating. So once you've removed all the dirt inside, you can get rid of this. Just pour it down the toilet. And I'm just gonna leave it here. So that's it, and Bob's your uncle. Hi David, Teresa Sarkissian arrives to you. I received this beautiful birdhouse condo as a gift. We put it up in a tree two years ago. I have yet to get any birds. Can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? We live in Dennisport, Massachusetts. Hi Teresa. That birdhouse condo you received as a gift certainly is a work of art, but I'm not surprised it's remained vacant for two years. Those kinds of structures with multiple numbers of apartments are really aimed at purple martins. They're large swallow-like birds that eat insects on the wing and usually nest in colonial situations. In the east, they usually prefer a birdhouse or gourd, but in the west, they often utilize woodpecker holes in dead trees or large cacti. Sometimes you can even find them nesting in a cavity in a building or cliff, or even in traffic lights and street lamps. The most common Martin condo can be made of wood or aluminum, have about eight to 12 rooms and either hang from wires or sit atop poles. It's not easy to get Martins to use these houses though. They definitely like them located in open areas and with easy flight access. While there is the odd exception, we're generally talking about 30 to 120 feet from human housing and at least 40 to 60 feet from any trees. Having wires nearby for perching is a bonus, but they shouldn't be connected to the condo in any fashion so as to minimize predator access. Don't feel bad. I tried for several years to get Martins to use my house in Montreal, but to no avail. Depending on your taste for birds, perhaps you should be thankful that the house sparrows also rejected your condo. 
A recent study shows that pigeons beat humans consistently when it comes to learning new things and switching tasks at the same time. You see, us humans, we tend to analyze each situation individually. So very often we get all confused and make mistakes when trying to switch from one task to another. What scientists discovered with pigeons is that they have this amazing ability when they learn a new thing, then they remember it, they recognize and react to it exactly the same way no matter how much time passes which actually makes them really fast and efficient when switching between different tasks once upon a time the expression bird brain used to be something very negative but as more studies show it should actually be a compliment The spoon-billed sandpiper travels 16,000 kilometers or 10,000 miles every year from Southeast Asia to its breeding grounds in Arctic Russia. It's also one of the most endangered birds in the world with only 200 breeding pairs left in the wild. But there is good news. The Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust in the UK, the same organization that's behind Sasha Dench's epic flight, now has seven eggs that were laid by sandpipers in captivity for the first time ever. In 2011, the Trust started a conservation flock, but nothing was happening until last week. So now there are seven eggs and other breeding pairs that are displaying mating behavior. And believe it or not, the sandpiper population in the wild is also increasing. This is all thanks to efforts to raise awareness. Check out their YouTube channel, Spoonie Vision. Japan is a country that doesn't really have that much land, so the Japanese have become very resourceful when managing their land. What once used to be a landfill with over 50 million tons of garbage was turned into a bird sanctuary that now has over 184 thriving species. This area is protected and it has 25 ponds, lakes and streams and a mountain, offering a diverse landscape for birds. One of the indications of the success of this project is the presence of the Eastern Marsh Harrier. This bird is really finicky when it comes to its environment and it doesn't breed if it feels that the area is contaminated. A 10-year study showed that all the species were doing quite well in that bird sanctuary up until now. A solar plant is being built close by and all of a sudden Eastern Marsh Harriers are leaving or they stopped reproducing. The Japanese Japanese government and the power company are trying to figure out what exactly is bothering the Harriers and they are looking for a solution. The Arizona Game and Fish Department is organizing a one-day hummingbird festival near Eager, Arizona. The exciting thing about this festival is that the author of the Peterson Field Guide to Hummingbirds of North America, Sherry Williamson, will be demonstrating how to safely capture and ban hummingbirds. July 30th is when it's all happening. It's been super interesting to receive pictures from New Zealand and Australia from Robbie Clipperton. He's been a huge supporter of the show. And this week as well, we have top six instead of top five because three of the pictures received exactly the same amount of votes. So here we go. And the winner is Don Amundred, who lives in Ottawa. We're sending him this feeder, Squirrel Solution 200. Congratulations, Don. We invite you to be one of our judges on the next episode. Send us more pictures to photos at brownbirdcare.com. Well, that's it for now. I hope you're busy with your gardens. I still have another batch of native wildflowers to plant, and that's what I'm off to do right now.